Hello, I'm Holly Tanner with the Herman and Wallace Pelvic Rehab Institute, and I'm here with Tara Sullivan and Allison Lowry, and they're going to tell us about the pain science courses that they put together. Would each of you introduce yourselves a bit and tell us uh, some about your background? Sure. I'm Tara. I have been a pelvic health rehab therapist for 10 years now, and I've been with Herman and Wallace for hmm, several, maybe four and I've worked exclusively in public health since I graduated from PT school. I was just interested in it because I had my own personal issues that ended up being pelvic floor related. And I was just able to find Herman and Wallace and get my training that way and just get more and more involved. And so I've been at the hospital the past 10 years. I started the pelvic health program here, which has expanded across the valley. We have nine locations now and when I started I had four people on my schedule total and it was just me <laughs> so wow. there's definitely a need in the valley and um, it's been fun and I love mentoring and teaching and Allie and I work together mm -hmm. so that's how we met yes I'm Allison I'm an orthopedic PT and I am board certified in orthopedics as well so I primarily treat orthopedic conditions but then through having Tara come to our clinic and bring in a pelvic floor population, we've developed a, a great relationship where me from an ortho perspective is better able to recognize some of my orthopedic patients. A lot of their pain was actually coming from pelvic floor. So I've gotten a huge education in how pelvic floor crosses over into my world. And we actually end up sharing quite a few patients to re-educate the whole system and, um, really treat people holistically and it's it's been a huge upgrade to both of our practices yeah since we started working together it just it filled in the blanks for both of for us both of us mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. just learning from each other and then that's kind of how the pain science class started because I was teaching a class at Franklin Pierce University and the students there didn't know what central sensitization was and I was like Ooh, I've never had to talk or teach about this, but I hear her all the time talking to her patients. So I was like, hey, would you like to do a little blurb in my class? And then as she was teaching in my class, I was applying it to all my patients. And then we just came together and we're like, we need to teach about this. Yeah. Brilliant. And so what is it that you hope this course imparts to the participants? What can they expect to learn when they come to this class? So participants can expect to learn quite a bit about pain science. So we start with a day one is, is quite a bit of didactic work, talking about and explaining pain and the true physiology of pain and what pain is and central sensitization and peripheral sensitization. And then we go into, from a clinical perspective, like when you're going to see that in the clinic, and then it's integration into specific pelvic floor dysfunctions and syndromes, and being able to recognize that, and then being able to apply that knowledge, but then also the treatment of how to explain pain to a patient. How do we re-educate the nervous system to be less sensitive? And how can we improve these patients' lives that their pain may not be coming from a true tissue injury source? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in a lot of the classes that, like my sex med class, for example, really work, you know, that is geared towards like specific pain generators, physiological causes. So we don't, we don't go into how to treat those because those are all the other classes that you can take through Herman Wallace and learn how to treat like the actual peripheral pain generator like that has that physiological mechanism. So what we wanted to do was just take that population. So pa patients who have IC that have endo that had, they may or may not have that pain generator anymore, but they definitely have the sensitization component to it mm -hmm. and be able to recognize that, hey, it, it may not mean they need another laparoscopic surgery. It may be more of a pain science. And how can you recognize that even in the initial interview? Mm -hmm. And then what do we do to help them from our perspective? Yep. And so what categories of skills can folks expect to walk away from? Like the mirror, 
imagery or you know what what sort of categories or skill sets are you teaching about in terms of lab activities and instruction we definitely cover the biggest thing is being able to recognize when there may be a, a sensitization component and this is not your regular patient that has a peripheral injury and we just need to rehab them through that process and and then move on with their lives these are it's a whole different ball game when we've got our nervous system in a hypersensitive state and how to decrease that so recognizing when that may be part of the cause is huge so that's one big skill set as far as treatment goes we discuss that a huge part of the treatment is actually educating the patient about pain and trying to decrease the fear around movement and function so that they can start to re-educate the system that they don't need to be afraid of the pain, that the pain is not necessarily sending the signals that it's supposed to be sending. As far as needing to protect, they don't need to protect themselves quite so much. Mm -hmm. And so explaining, being able to explain that to the patient is huge. Also how we use our words to decrease fear around pain is mm -hmm. huge. So even in our regular everyday education, we can apply that skill set. And then we talk about um, lots of ways that we can decrease the sensitivity of the nervous system through um, dry needling, diaphragmatic breathing, sleep hygiene, sound bladder Act retraining, mm -hmm. how that actually targets the brain. And it's not just about eliminating irritants, which is more of like the peripheral pain generator side, but mm -hmm. actually retraining the brain and how we, our signals get mixed up and we can, you know, train the whole system. Mm -hmm. And I, like she said, a lot of the, we focus a lot on therapeutic alliance because having that trust in the words we use and what we say or don't say and how we present something. And, you know, that's huge in their treatment. Yep. Um, I know for me, I was diagnosed with IC and it wasn't IC. Mm. And for me, when the doctor said, you have IC, it's a bladder disease. That was heavy. On me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I have a bladder disease. Well, it turns out it wasn't IC. I don't have any symptoms anymore. It was pelvic floor dysfunction, but I remember that label and that casualness with, oh, you have a bladder disease. Well, what do I do about it? Well, there isn't really anything you can do. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to just kind of bridge that gap of this. Yeah. That's wonderful. And don't you find, don't you find too, that it's, there's this sort of full circle nature of us educating patients who are coming in saying, don't tell me it's all in my head. But then yeah. as they learn more, they kind of look at you and say, so it's kind of in my head, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's in the brain. Yes, it's not in your head. You are not making this yeah. up. We don't right. want to feel like you're definitely not crazy. We don't think you're not feeling what you're feeling no. because you are. Because your brain is telling you. Right. And we need to just retrain the brain and mm -hmm. tell yes. the brain that it's okay. Yes. Those signals don't mean what you think it means. So we don't need to feel that anymore. And we go through lots of ways that you can try to get that to come across to a patient as well. And it, it not being yet another label and another diagnosis. And we've got mm -hmm. lots of analogies and things to equate mm -hmm. it to so that it resonates better so that people don't feel like it's all in their head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that is the first thing, you know, they think if you don't present it just right they think you're saying like oh it's just in your head and we're like no 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 you're feeling it it's in your brain which yes. <laughs> is in your head but that's not what we're saying right wonderful well what else do you want folks to know about this class what kind of feedback are you getting uh from the course itself and what are some pearls that you find people really telling you oh that was so helpful yeah, so last year, was it last year? Mm -hmm. Last year was the first time we taught it. We got great feedback mm -hmm. about how they felt like they could take our examples and go right to the clinic and have that conversation where yeah. a lot of people, we understand what central sensitization is. I understood it, but I didn't know how to talk to my patients about it specifically until I started working with Allie, where I recognized I was doing that, but not knowing really why, like recognizing that I, I was like, okay, well with these type of patients, I need to speak a certain way, but I didn't know what that was. And mm -hmm. so we were able to kind of put the science together and apply it to the, the pelvic population. So uh, I think a lot of the participants said that they felt like they could go right out to work on Monday and have that 
conversation. Like we even have, we have several case examples this Mm -hmm. time, even more than last time. And where we talk about like actual conversations that we had with a patient so they can see the natural back and forth that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, we're so excited that you're sharing this, this class with the participants and I hope folks get to, to meet both of you and, and learn all the good stuff that's in your class. Thank you. Yes. We're excited too. Yes. Wonderful.